fire had started long before their train even reached East Palestine, and I can't believe they didn't see that burning. It took almost five or six days for them to tell us what was in those cars. You know, you can't sell the house right now, so you're just stuck here. You know, you, nobody can afford to go live in a hotel forever and not know if you're getting compensated. What exactly is going on in East Palestine, Ohio? Now, my producer Efron and I made the trip from Toronto to Ohio to just find out for ourselves and see for ourselves exactly what's going on here on the ground at the site of one of the largest toxic train derailments in American history. On February 3rd, right behind me, a train containing very hazardous chemicals derailed and essentially spilled those chemicals into this village. Authorities stated that they needed to control the spill by burning and releasing the toxins. They say that this was to avoid an explosion. The village was evacuated and five days later on February 8th, residents were told it is safe to return home. But the question remains, is it truly safe here? One of the chemicals released is vinyl chloride. Long-term vinyl chloride exposure is associated with an increased risk of a rare form of liver cancer, primary liver cancer, brain and lung cancers, lymphoma, and leukemia. Norfolk Southern is the company responsible for the train that derailed. Many residents are overall not happy with how the situation was handled. Some locals have even filed a federal lawsuit where they are seeking to force Norfolk Southern to set up health monitoring for residents in both Ohio and Pennsylvania. Now, it's hard to truly gauge just how serious the situation is here. Is it safe to drink the water? Is it safe to breathe the air? Is it safe to just simply walk around? Now, we made a special website for you guys to check out all of our coverage here in East Palestine, Ohio. That website is called ohioexplosion.com. Like I said, through that website, you can check out all of our coverage. And if you appreciate the coverage, you can consider supporting our work through that same website. Let's go talk to some locals and see exactly how they feel about this situation. Do you feel it's safe here right now? I feel somewhat safe, but I, I don't feel like they're telling us everything. I don't know. I, you know, I mean, I think pretty much everything you're hearing is the uh, railroad's narrative. You know what I mean? So, then, uh, I don't know. I don't think it's safe here, no. And I think they've lied about a lot of stuff, and I think that they could have done better, especially Norfolk. No one knows. Um, it, we're being told it is, uh, but some, some of the things we see make us think it's not. So the, the hardest part is just not knowing. It's hard to make plans on the next step. What could, what, where are we? What can we do next? We're still very nervous about it um, because they keep coming up with contaminated water problems. And I don't know, I'm even half afraid to shop. I feel like we're not being told everything. I know something came out yesterday about them covering up contaminated soil when they rebuilt the railroad instead of pulling it out like they promised. I've been here since the night it happened. I've been covering this since the night it happened. Um, I have not left here since February 3rd. And, you know, I feel safe, but, you know, what's in the water is what I'm worried about, you know. I don't know. They're, uh, they're, they're to me, they're keeping everything kind of hush-hush. You know, they're not, they're not telling everybody everything. So you live an hour outside of East Palestine. Did, have you experienced anything from the train derailment that's affected where you live? Uh, not really, you know, but there's a big news. Like I'm a Chinese, like a really the news from China. So people think there's a big news, you know, the big dark cloud kind of concerning me. So I came here to see what's really going on here. People aren't stupid. People know what's going on and I think most of us are pretty pessimistic about getting ruled by a huge corporation that's not going to do anything about our property property values you know a lot of people like me I I I would leave you know I would love to get out of here I wouldn't stay here I told my kids stay out of town if you can um, 
but I mean, I think a lot of us are a slave to our mortgage payments. I don't really know who who's to blame, but I would say that they need to step up and, and inspect their trains a lot more and stop making them this long. This one's been going through for about two, three minutes already. If you check your trains and tell all the cities that you go through what you have in them trains, maybe we could have responded better. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the first responders were amazing, but I think these little towns should know what's on these trains that come through here. I think for sure the railroad's at fault. Um, I think the investigation will, will let us know how much they're at fault, but for sure it's their problem. I think they lifted the evacuation too soon. I think they should have waited a while and had done more testing. I've had people contact me. They have not even returned to their house yet because they're afraid of bringing their kids back to this. They don't know what they're bringing their kids back to. Anybody who wants to just leave here because they don't feel safe, I think should be taken care of. Something needs to be done. Thanks so much for watching the report, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. You can see more reports like this from East Palestine, Ohio at ohioexplosion.com. If you like the coverage, if you appreciate the journalism that we're providing, you can consider making a donation through that same website so we can continue to report on stories like this and show you guys the other side of the story. So once again, thank you guys for tuning in.